116 strikeouts in 110 innings and only 23 walks. Her control for the most part has been exceptionally good. Right on cue, Lynn. <laughs> she threw that ball in the dirt off of the catcher's shin guard. But that's only ball one. That's true, but wow, <laughs> that was prophetic. The wind is blowing out today a little bit. Burzon comes right back and levels the count on Woolers. The sky is the color of a cornflower today. It is beautiful. A cornflower? I don't even know what a cornflower looks like. Look it up. Just look at the sky, and I, that, that will give you the color of a cornflower. I just know it's a beautiful day in the capital city. Burzon, all-American ace, and she joins a pretty elite list. That last pitch at 70 miles an hour, and she completely blew that ball past Woolers. That's kind of the equivalent to 98, 99, 100 or so in baseball. Woolers leads the team in most of the offensive categories, batting average, run scored, hits. And she's the leadoff. The 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Bergeron, and Woolers does not draw the throw at first base. She's aboard on a strikeout while Bergeron is catching. In the outfield, Sierra Briggs is flanked by Allie Newland and Mackenzie Ruderdy. A strike to KK McCrary. A 287 average for McCrary. And that's chop foul. Auburn not electing to sacrifice over. Auburn has three 300 hitters. I make it four 300 hitters in the lineup. One has not been an everyday player. That's Rose Roach. <laughs> Michaela Packer, who's hitting 309, is on deck. Auburn hitting this year ranks 12th in the SEC, last in doubles, and nearly last in uh, on base percentage. So they have had problems offensively. We are not seeing their number one pitcher in this first game, Maddie Penta. She certainly will be available for relief, and we'll see her a lot in the series. But uh, pitching has not been a problem for Auburn. Offense has been. Got her on that uh, drop ball in the dirt. You know, she'll get those strikeouts with the drop ball that it's not a strike. Bergeron's uh, earning her scholarship back there right now. Bergeron to Bergeron. Painting that corner. As Beth Torina says, calling pitches for Bergeron is like a video game. Changing speeds and planes. That's pop straight back foul. Packer faces an 0-2 count. Michaela is batting 309. She has started every game. One of four Auburn Tigers who have done that. And the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. She was late on that Hummer. And Once a pair of strikeouts, two well, outs now, and Woolers remains at first base. Once again, drop out, drop ball working. She would have three Ks, but the first ball was a, you know, tough ball in the dirt for Bergeron to handle. Well, they, she does get a strikeout for that. Correct. Officially, so she has struck out three in the inning. Right now, as you see, Sydney Bergeron is fighting the. Sunshine, she's shielding her eyes on every return throw. Oh yeah, this is the time of day where the left side of the field will play havoc with those fielders. Nelia Peralta is batting the cleanup shortstop. More of a factor for Auburn than the, than the LSU Tigers since this is LSU's home field. They practice on this every day, know what that sun's gonna do. Peralta hitting just under 300. This is her 33rd start. This is the 35th game of the season for Auburn. Peralta with 22 driven in. That's second on the club. And she's hit a couple of home runs. 
There is Mickey Dean in his seventh and final season as Auburn head coach. He has announced his retirement. He's stepping away from the game at the end of this year. One He's the, done a really good job at Auburn. One of the best gentlemen around. Coaching at third right now is Eugene Linty. He, Eugene was a longtime DePaul head coach. Came over and helped uh, helped with the Auburn Tigers. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Sliced foul. That's over the net and drops into the LSU dugout. The outfielders are shading their eyes, especially on the left side and in center field, as well as uh, Pleasance at shortstop. The 2-2. That dips a little bit out of the zone. And that was her changeup. And a good take by Peralta. That's a courageous take. And that ball was, it was close. Here we go at 3-2. The runner on first will be moving. Ground ball to Petty. The sure-handed. But she has the ability to change speeds and move the ball around quite effectively in the strike zone. Shelby Lowe has walked only seven batters the entire year. She has struck out 47. The opponents are hitting 238 against her. You see the velo at 64. The changeup comes at 55. Curve is her best pitch, and she can throw it on both sides of the plate. And we just saw one. This is her ninth appearance, her six, uh, excuse me, her ninth start, her 16th appearance. She's had one complete game. Newland takes a full cut and hits a top spin liner into center field for a base hit. And Newland does what Newland does, base hits. That's her 45th of the year. That's four behind Briggs. She let that ball get deep in her at bat. And drive a single up the middle. Speaking of Briggs, she's on a team high 12 game hitting streak. And her average is 383. That leads LSU. Briggs ranks number three in the SEC with 49 hits. What a career she's had, both offensively and defensively. And you talked about it. She's got a 12 game hitting streak right now. Two time gold glove winner. It's likely we'll see Briggs either tap and go or try to bunt. That ball spun outside. Good take by Briggs. You, to become a good bunter, bunt strikes. To become a good hitter, hit strikes. She's got nine sacrifices, and that leads the team. Nine sacrifice hits. The 1-1. One, one. Bunted foul over the shoulder of the catcher, Anna Woolers. Auburn has thrown out eight base runners so far this year. Not a lot of teams running on them. Might have been a good one to go on. That levels the count at two on Briggs. Briggs gonna gets be enough hit. on it and Ooh. is safe at first base. Just a little slow roller to the right side. Rose Roach did everything she could at second base. But Briggs had too much speed on this slow little tap. Briggs recognized that slow drop ball. They took something off of that pitch and she just deadened her bat and where the ball was placed and where second base was playing, it was a base hit because Briggs runs so well. She's now up to half a hundred in base hits. Pleasance is first pitch swinging. So Briggs immediately moves her hitting streak to 13 games. Pleasance is batting 297, a team leading 35 driven in. Although Gutierrez 
is close with 31. You know that they're going to pitch Pleasance outside from a myriad of reasons. You want a ground ball to third, get that uh, lead runner, but you do not want to throw it in her power zone. Actually, number two on the RBI list right now for LSU is Allie Newland at the top of the order with 34. Pleasance takes a swing on a pitch that was perhaps a little high and tight. That one tied her up. Yep, yeah, big time rise ball right in on her hands. And she can't catch up to it. So Shelby Lowe delivers a very nice pitch. And here's the one two. Let's see what Pleasance is able to do with it. She went back outside with a breaking pitch. It's popped up. And the second baseman. With the pitchers, and he is calling the pitches in the dugout. So both head coaches work with their pitchers. So now it's Gutierrez swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Shelby Lowe has looked good here early, even though there are a couple of base runners. But she has shown a variety of pitches. Her best pitch, we are told, is her changeup. But she can throw a lot of other stuff as well. The 0-1. There's the change right there. She kind of throws that off of her drop ball. Some gaudy batting averages for the LSU Tigers. Briggs, Newland, Ruderty, Gutierrez, and Petty with a minimum of 60, 60 at bats, all very healthy over 300. This ball is lobbed into right center field. It's caught, and a throw back to second is close. But Newland is able to beat the throw. Well, Gutierrez flies to her counterpart in right. Hits it well. Isis Tresvik makes the catch. Then throws it back to second base. And Newland was almost too far off the bat, yeah, but she was able to hustle back. I guess she thought it was a hit. I thought it was going to be a hit also at first, but. Here is Rudity. That's off the first baseman's glove, and it rolls behind the back. Here's the throw to the plate in plenty of time for the out. Newland is thrown out on a ball. Rudity. Base hit off of the glove of the first baseman. It was backed up by Rose, the second baseman, and she was able to throw it to the plate to get Newland, who had started at second base and was coming home all the way after the initial yeah, once ball the, roll by the first baseman. Once the ball rolled past, I don't think there was any question Beth Serena was going to try and score. Never stopped her. Here's Isis Tresvik. She stands even with the dish. And a pitch barely misses outside. So we saw a healthy dose of drop balls from Burzon in the first inning. There's another one. Just a tough pitch to pick up and hit. Well, even if you're able to time it up, if you're able to recognize it and, and get a halfway decent swing, there's still a likelihood that the ball is going to be beat into the ground and absolutely not a lot of fly ball outs usually when Burzon is pitching. And a very good defense in the infield to gobble them up. A chance for Petty on the backhand side. Safe at first base. Whoa, are we going to challenge that? I Let's see. She coming out. It's awfully close. I think she is. We are going to have the game's first challenge. It comes in the top of the second. Birmingham will be alerted. Challenging the safe out call. And we'll take another look base. right here. Petty gets Let's rid see. of it. Previous play is under review. I think safe. I think Blue's got it right again. Now. After review, the ruling on the field is upheld. The runner is safe. That's the way I saw it on our first look. I wasn't so sure on the second look.
These calls in SEC games are initiated by a review panel in Birmingham at the SEC headquarters. And let's just say how much we appreciate how quick they make decisions. Absolutely. But of course, they're already making, they're looking at it by the time Beth Tareen is coming out of the dugout, I'm sure. No, they are proactive. Yes, they are. And they've got monitors going on every game in the league. That must be quite a setup in that uh, media control room. Tresvik at first base leads Auburn with 14 stolen bases. That was a good decision by Pleasance. I thought for a moment she might take the sure out at first, but well, she got it over to Petty for the force. Only that gun of Pleasance could get that lead runner because that big hop almost created a, a safe call at second. And so the player who leads the team with 14 stolen bases is erased. Beth Tarina in her 13th season as LSU head coach and closing in on the win total of my partner Yvette Girard here at LSU. Just two, to, two to tie and three to go to head. Let's see, where are the Tigers? That yep. could happen this weekend. Could, well, yep, it could. And I'd gladly give her the game ball. Got about, what, 800 more, though, overall to get to you. Look at Pleasance. Look at Pleasance. She makes that appear to be routine, but it is not anything but routine. And in has the presence, Pleasance has the presence mm -hmm. to make sure she goes covers third because there is no one there. Watch this though, short hop. Not only does she throw it from all those arm angles, the velocity and accuracy from anywhere she throws is just remarkable. I mean, it's just not something that's common at all. I haven't seen it too much in any other female that uh, has played shortstop or any infield position, but McKee, needs to cut towards the pitcher. She was kind of in front of Pleasance. Here's Amelia Leck, the first baseman. And this will be handled in right field by Mackenzie Root. Wednesday, her first home run of the year was a three-run blast in the eighth inning. And it gave LSU a come from behind victory over pesky Southeastern. Just when it looked like the Lions had the win wrapped up, Petty with the bomb. Petty was a heartbreaker to the Lions. And her dad's name is Tommy Petty. Shelby Lowe checks the wristband and the lefty brings it right down the middle. Lowe surrendered base hits to Newland and Briggs and Rudity in the first inning. But the inning ended when Newland was thrown out trying to score from second base on one of those base hits. Petty and Lynch and Bergeron for the Tigers. There's nothing about it while she was rounding the bases. <laughs> that euphoria had kicked in, had it not? Yep. Fewest in the SEC. That, that's a stat that you'll take every night and tomorrow. You got a chance. That means you're applying pressure more often than anybody on the opposing defense. Ball one to Lynch. Means you're making the other team catch it, throw it, catch it. Lynch fouls that off. The LSU is averaging almost two runs a game more than Auburn. Shelby Lowe. 
has pitched with four base runners on base already. Here we go. Steve, right? Shelby Lowe, a senior. Seems like we've seen said Shelby Lowe's name and Maddie Pinta's name forever. It's because they're seniors. Alabama native. And the one two. A little high and away. Right now there is no wind at Tiger Park. Yeah, look at that. The flags are still. And just a little chiffon in the sky. Thought you were going to say meringue. You never know. The 2-2 two -two downstairs. The 3-2 pitch banged up the middle. Shortstop's got it. Steps on the back for one over to first for two. She was moving that way and that ball. She was just in the right spot to make a no questionable double play. Peralta picks this one up, as you say, on the move. One step to the bag and then had half the distance to first base to throw it over. So an easy 6-3 double play. The Tigers are one of the most, the LSU Tigers are one of the most accomplished double play teams in America this year. But Auburn turns one that time. Here's Bergeron. Macy, a sophomore from the frog capital of Louisiana. Rain, R-A-Y-N-E. Ground ball left side, Weidra is there. Tigers. Annabelle Weidra takes a strike. Allie, uh, Carly Hoover playing in Japan, and Allie Wall Jasper now a pitching coach at Boise State. We saw her earlier this year. Burzon makes the overhand throw for the out. We used to see pitchers throw it underhand and whip it over there like a pitch. Or run it over there, mainly. Seems like those, you're right. Seems like those days are gone a little bit along with all the double plays turned now. They're the facet of the game that has really changed. You see the All-American wall there. Nice to have two All-American pitchers on the same teams. Back to the top of the order for Anna Woolers. She reached on a wild pitch strikeout in the first. Two balls and a strike, one out, scoreless game, top of the third. Game time tomorrow is six o'clock. Game time Sunday is one o'clock. Both times Central Daylight Saving Time. Special weekend here with the Teal game. Lots of uh, opportunities to recognize and raise funds in an anti-cancer campaign tomorrow. Ovarian cancer game, the all for Alex game, when all SEC softball community unites and all 13 teams participate by wearing teal for the all Alex campaign. Of course, it's honoring the legacy of Mississippi State's Alex Wilcox. There'll be a walk tomorrow morning, which I will participate in, so. If I look ragged in the six o'clock game, shame on me <laughs> since it's should early bring, in the morning. Should I bring the horse Oxygen. liniment and, and everything else? <laughs> no, don't be There's silly. There's a base hit by McCrary with two outs after a strikeout by Willers. So Ben Gay, horse liniment, none of that is, is needed? No, silly. I should have about five hours to uh, <laughs> recuperate. Okay. No, the walk is, I think, a mile and a half. All proceeds go to... As we said, 
trying to fight ovarian cancer. Here's Packer, who struck out in the first. She comes to the plate with a teammate McCrary at first base following a single up the middle. There are two gone in the third. You know, Yvette, it's been a while, obviously, but LSU was the last remaining undefeated team in NCAA Division I softball. They had as it won its 24th game in a row. They had quite the streak. They had some scares, but as it's proven, just like the other night against uh, Southeastern, they are the comeback kids. They do not quit. They've had, shouldn't, but I'm, I have to go back and look how many walk-off wins they have now this year. It's I amazing. Think six. It's amazing. It started early at the Clearwater tournament. Looked like they were going to lose a couple of games and won it in the last inning. Here's the 2 2 pitch to Packer. Just out of the strike zone. And my recollection was correct. There have been six victories of that nature. Yeah. LSU right now has a number four RPI ranking nationally. And there is another close pitch that's ruled in Auburn's favor. So the inning continues as think... Packer with a very good eye lets a couple of very close pitches yeah, I don't go think... by. And that's off the plate. Yeah, Burzon, well, she didn't look too happy with the pitch call before. Yeah, they're uh, they're definitely the comeback kids. Uh, don't leave your TV till the umpire says ball game. Nelia Peralta at the plate. She bounced out to Petty last time. By the way, if it seems as though Burzon is getting ahead in the count frequently, it's because she is. She has thrown 11 first pitch strikes already. Only the very first pitch of the game. One ball, and two she strikes. is not missing by much. And the one, two, that's a little bit wide. Now, you know my theory on catchers moving the glove back into the strike zone. Bonkers. Umpires. Except when, except when they really pull it, and it's obvious. Ground ball left side. Shortstop's Ooh. got it safe at that the plate. That was awkward. And the throw to the plate, not in time. That was very awkward at shortstop. LSU fails to get an out. A, a wacky setup. And this is kind That's of. That's very similar to the play that LSU tried to score from second exactly. base and was thrown out. This is kind of Burzon's little bitty kryptonite here. She's sailing along and then. I don't know if she loses focus. Walks runner is on the move to third, and the other runner moves up as well. Auburn uh, showing some aggressive base running, and the double steal is effective, and it puts runners at second and third. What I was going to say is she's cruising, and then she walks a couple of hitters, and then something happens, and there's a run scored. And Auburn doesn't have anything to lose here, so and they're not a big-time running team. We only have uh, la, 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 coming into this game 46 stolen bases. Isis Trezvik had an infield hit last time. A base hit here in the outfield would play a couple. High chop to Pleasance, throws over to first base in time. Pleasance with another remarkable throw, and Auburn immediately is calling for a review. After review, the ruling on the field is upheld. The runner is out. So Pleasance gets the out by a quarter step at first base, and we move forward. Here's Maddox McKee batting for the first time against Shelby Lowe. LSU grabbed three base hits in the first, two of them on the infield, but couldn't score. And then had a walk, and then Bounced into a double play and a ground out. So Shelby Lowe has pitched with four base runners on in the first couple of innings. 
And you see McGee up there, she's ready to hit. She's not just gonna slap the ball on the ground. That's a full swing. Maddox hitting 235. This is her 17th start. She has two extra base hits. They've both been doubles. And of course, she's taken Danica Coffey's place over at third base. The All-American lost early in the season. Was having an All-American year. She's had her knee surgery and is progressing nicely through rehabilitation. She has stated her intention of playing next year, taking the medical red shirt. Yep. Right in the middle of your screen there. Huge loss for the Tigers, defensively and offensively. The pitch lifted on the infield. The shortstop backs up. Peralta's got it. So here is Newland having an All-America type season for LSU. Her defense has been extraordinary. Her offense has been tremendous. Um, I'm saying it right now. If she's not All-American this year, somebody has truly screwed up. Second on the team and runs batted in. First on the team and home runs. And then she does that. Gets the bunt down, but it's turned saying. into an out by Woolers, and they say it hit the bat in the batter's box. And it's going to be a redo for Allie Newland. And Mickey Dean's going to ask if the bat was in fair ter territory. She, if the ball rolls back, she should be out. And that's what he's asking. And the call stands. Well, if the bat is in fair territory, it's playable and it's inadvertent, which it was. But they do bring her back. Newland at the plate. Oh, that's a really good off speed breaking pitch. Took the words right out of my mouth, Lynn. That's the best changeup she's uh, thrown so far. And it had a little twist to it at the end. It was inching away from the end of Newland's swing. She's going to throw that changeup at about 55 miles an hour. She tried it again, just left it a little short. Well, we welcome Justin McLeod from D1 Softball in the ballpark today. He is, in my opinion, the preeminent softball, college softball reporter in the nation. And uh, he's here to cover this series. He does a great job of promoting collegiate softball. Travels the country. Newland yanks this one out of play. It's in the bullpen on the right side. One ball, two strikes on Allie Newland on a gorgeous evening for softball. The pitch smacked foul pass first, 15 feet. And that's just one of uh, plenty of catches that we've seen her make over the years. The one two pitch. Oh, that's close. Newland got the benefit of the take. Shelby Lowe can't believe it. See, Mickey all, Dean <laughs> can't believe it. She's not smiling because she thinks the call was right. No. That's a derisive smile. Her, you saw all of her teeth in that yeah. smile. Very derisively. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Oh, Time no called. Pitch. Time called. No pitch. What's this about? Blue at third. Oh, is this a uh, time clock violation? We'll see. Mickey Dean is saying, what exactly did you call? They, so they say it's a 3-2 count, so that would be a time clock violation or ball three. So 
Well, now it's a full count with one out and the base is empty. Auburn leads 1 0 on a run scored in the top of this inning. KK McCrary lines it up and makes the catch in left field. Lowe's doing a good job so far of keeping the Tigers at bay. Briggs takes a strike. She's at the plate with a 13-game hitting streak, courtesy of an infield hit in the first. Auburn and LSU, a cat fight tonight in Tiger Park. A pair of Tigers getting after it. That Serena is 12 and 11 against Auburn. Briggs committed, and the count is one and two. Auburn has only won three SEC games, but one of them was a four to one victory over number four Tennessee, and that broke a 20 game losing, uh, excuse me, a 20 game winning streak for Tennessee. Yep, and it ended that uh, attempt at a sweep. One of the keys for Auburn, as it is for most teams, is not giving up home runs. When they have not surrendered a home run, they've got 16 wins and no losses. Weidra makes the play at first base from third. It's a one-two. Some work to do. He's not really retired. It'll be file Monday, which is the deadline. Electronically, though. Greatest thing ever. The pitch to Penta is smacked right back from whence it came. That was a really good piece of hitting there. I don't know if we can see this again, but she attacked that first pitch and just really got her hands inside the ball. Look at this. That ball was by Burzon before she could react. We've gone from a 45 degree setting yeah. with the press box <laughs> air conditioner to about 95 right now. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's crazy. Abby Smith is the pinch runner. I have to raise the window up here, Lynn. I'm all for it. Whew. Make the pitcher handle it. Burrs on over to Petty covering. The sacrifice is successful by Roach. Good job by Burrs on for a second. I thought maybe she had launched it. And so Smith advances to second base. Here's Amelia Leck, who flied to right field last time. As we talked about, the Auburn Tigers don't have gaudy numbers, gaudy um, team batting average numbers, so they're going to play station to station. They're going to steal bases. They'll try to hit and run. They'll do all kind of things to score runs. Leck has been pretty good with runners in scoring position, hitting 355. Leck has struck out 28 times in less than 100 plate appearances this year, 17 walks, but she has hit eight home runs. Yep, sometimes those big home run hitters have those gaudy strikeout numbers. Babe Ruth. 55% of the time offensively, she's either homered, struck out, or walked. 
The 0 2. She hit the top of the softball and stays alive. Six o'clock game time tomorrow. One o'clock to wrap it up on Sunday. And the weatherman has promised outstanding conditions. Come out and work on your tan. Pick up a bag of hot nuts on your way into the and think ballpark of, and then bring them up to the press I box. I was going to say, and think of Lynn and I. Will she get her? I don't think so. Very alert movement by Smith from second base. And Bergeron having a little bit of trouble with that hard drop ball. It's a and wild see pitch. That, yeah, that ball bounced before the plate. And I said Bergeron is uh, he's earning her scholarship in this game. Pleasance will keep the runner at third and then whips it over to Gutierrez. Two outs. But still work to be done by LSU with Weidra at the plate. Annabelle is hitting 275, a couple of homers, six driven in. This is her 20th start this year, her 26th appearance. And we go right now. Steve. Right. She's been much better with runners in scoring position than she has overall. She's hitting 462 and chases with runners in scoring position and just chased a big rise ball out of the zone. That's what Burzon can do. She'll change your eye level. A run in the third for Auburn. That's where we stand in the fourth. New York native Burzon that ended up going to boarding school in Chattanooga, Tennessee, so she could play travel ball in Tennessee. Swing and a miss. Auburn leaves a base runner at third. Burzon series during the regular season. They're probably saying when football does it, we'll do it. Well, baseball plays 30. Softball plays 24 in the league. Baseball has all, they have everybody that competes. Vanderbilt, right? They have everybody. Right, Everybody right. has a team in the SEC. Axe Milanowski is now at first base for Leck. So Milanowski replaces Amelia Leck for Auburn. Let's see if Pleasance can get something started. Out, hitter. So Shelby Lowe, who's only walked one, hits Pleasance to open this inning. They're so geared up now. You know, in the past, people would be falling down, crying, and <laughs> Passing out and hit my funny bone. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. Low has hit nine batters this year. Her control. Or check it. That's the ninth time that uh, Pleasance has been plunked. Low's control has witnessed by so few walks coming into this game as been wonderful. She's only hit a couple of batters. Truly controlled the LSU Tigers. Keep saying the ti LSU Tigers because, of course, the Auburn Tigers. We got the, and the she's cats a, in a fight. She's a perfect example, Shelby Lowe, of a pitcher who does not have to knock the bat out of your hands, does exactly. not have to strike out 10, 12 a game to get your attention. Say it all the time. If you can't get the strikeouts, you have to control hitters, meaning you got to throw good pitches. Let your defense help you. A pinch runner at first base for Pleasance. It's Bedell. Savannah Bedell is running for Pleasance. Gutierrez trying to get something working here in the bottom of the fourth. Her numbers this year are staggering compared to last year. Look at the difference in batting average. 
285 to 339. Slugging percentage has almost doubled. She's got five home runs this year, one last year, and almost doubled in RBI. Bigger and stronger, and in my opinion, the most improved player on the team. This one popped up to Weedra at third base, one out. Let me go back to my point that I'm trying desperately to, to make. It's because the league is so good. To me, even though the record quote might suffer a little bit as opposed to scheduling a, a, a sure win, and that happens, as you know. Oh, yeah. So Everybody's trying to keep their job. So to me, just like baseball, I mean, there are teams with losing records in the SEC, losing SEC records, who make the playoffs. Almost all of them do. To me, you're not going to lose postseason opportunities by upgrading the quality of your schedule. Well, it may happen when these two teams come in. Well, they've already announced the schedule next year at 24. And That's course, my understanding and anyway. And, of course, we know Vanderbilt doesn't play softball. But isn't there a serious movement to uh, to get a softball team? Really? Where'd you hear that? Maybe if we keep putting pressure on them? <laughs> I know they are. This has nothing to do with softball, but they are undergoing some major renovation to their baseball complex. It's a nice little baseball complex. Well, it's isn't? landlocked right. the, the way and it I is. And I think they, that's the excuse they use for no softball team. But I've seen the... Uh, but they play very good softball in that area, the Tennessee, no uh, Nashville, Chattanooga area. Rudity swinging and fouling. Of course, you got to get into Vanderbilt. One out. One on. One nothing Auburn. One ball, two strikes on Rudity. She had an infield hit. Last time, as she pulled it off the first baseman's glove. Abby Smith has entered the game defensively in left field. So it's Milanowski at first base and Smith in left field. Out on a close play at first. But Dell is able to move up into scoring position with two outs. Roach to Milanowski for the out. Here comes the hero of Tuesday night's game. Tigers with a little bit of a slow start here. Both teams have three hits. Shelby Lowe. Base hit ties this game up. Lowe delivers. And there's a strike. A 423 hitter with runners in scoring position is Carly Petty. Wow, it's not very often in this ballpark that we see the flags just completely still, Lynn. They are right now. So anybody that hits this out, they earned it. Petty has been rock solid offensively, batting 333. That one home run was the three-run walk-off on Wednesday. Steady petty. Here we go. Belted high and deep to right field. Tresvik is back. Tresvik looks up. Carly Petty has done it again. It's her second home run in as many games. This one gives the Tigers of LSU the lead with a two-run shot over the right field wall. You can puck her up and kiss that baby goodbye as Carly Petty suddenly finds the home run swing. Petty with the power, stepping up once again to ignite her Tiger team. And like I said, she earned that. No wind assisted home run there. It bounced off the side of the scoreboard and her total is now 24. Carly Petty, a heartbreaker here in the fourth for Auburn. The pitch 
coming to Kelly Lynch. Hot shot on one hop, picked up by Rose, the out at first base. One is out of New Orleans. Do some really good softball players out of that. Uh, Constance Quinn played for the Voodoo organization, former LSU Tiger. Here's Anna Woolers at the top of the order. She has struck out twice. That's a foul ball. Well, we told you earlier that when Auburn pitchers do not allow a home run in a the game, they don't lose. Hmm. They were 16 and 0, but they have allowed a home run today. And it was Carly Petty's two run swing in the bottom of the fourth, which put LSU on top for the first time. And we just got finished talking about no wind and home runs would have to be earned. Let's check in with baseball from Knoxville, Tennessee two, LSU nothing in the top of the third. That's on That's ESPNU. Newland try. diving for it, can't get it. Briggs is backing it up, throws it back to the infield from the warning track. And, and a leadoff double by Woolers. And Newland slaps her glove in disgust, but look at the effort. She almost comes up with another circus catch here. We have seen her make these oh, types so of close. catches. That ball actually, she extended and it actually fell about in front of her wrist. It was a gapper all the way though for Woolers. Good piece of hitting there, Oppo. Woolers has been the most effective Auburn player offensively. She's gonna get pinch run for here. And this is Riley McNair. McNamara. McNamara, you got it. It's McNemer running. Riley McNemer. That pops the mitt for a strike. But here comes Auburn immediately on the double by Woolers. Applying pressure and putting a runner in scoring position. This doesn't look like an SEC team that's only won three games. This bunt oh. is thrown low and gobbled up by Petty. Good job by Petty. Petty just saved a run for sure. McKee ditched that one, and Petty somehow was able to stay on the bag and field this wicked throw. And as an infielder, you have to expect bad throws all the time, so you're ready. Ooh to make that kind of catch. If the runner would have been a little closer, Petty kind of bobbled that ball, but she did a great job in smothering it to get an out. Steady Petty. But there is the tying run at third base. And that was a good bunt because that ball was in her eyes and she forced it down. Packer oh, slams it and then play. the double play. Packer ripped it to the backhand last time, but she contributed in the top of the inning snaring a vicious line drive off the bat of Michaela Packer and turning it into a double play at third base unassisted. My partner, are you ready for some other SEC scores? Yes, I am. In the seventh inning, Arkansas is leading at South Carolina by one run. It's a 4-3 game. The Razorbacks will be here later in the year. Think in Four two to weeks. three, Razorbacks in the seventh over South Carolina. Missouri in the seventh leads Florida six to three. Mm, that's interesting. This Missouri team, I think, is, has been underrated the whole year. They gave the, the LSU Tigers fits. Kentucky leads Georgia six to two in the sixth. That's an interesting score. How about this? Mississippi State. Seven to one over Tennessee in the fourth. Whoa, State can hit. And Western Kentucky leads Ole Miss. <gasps> six to nothing in the sixth inning. This is the non-conference weekend for the Rebels. So you're up to date with SEC action. Wow, that's a, 
an eye-opening score, Mississippi State and Tennessee. The 2-2 pitch. Smacked foul on the left side. We're in the part of the evening, the early sunset, where the lights are not yet at full power, and I put that in quotes, meaning that Dusk. the contrast between the available sunlight and the and the uh, the lamps are not is not as great as it's going to be in 15 or 20 minutes, where the lights will have more effect on the park. So it's a little bit hard to see right now. Yeah, but those the left side of the field is so grateful that the sun is not it directly in their eyes anymore. It's about to completely set here. Here's right. the 2-2. Two -two. A smash to left. That's down in front of Smith. Maddox McKee, the freshman, gets aboard with one out. She had her head down and the fat part of the bat between the stitches and lines it the other way. Yeah, she's not the soft touch. She's been getting more and more action as a reliever primarily in the circle for the Auburn Tigers. She's going to throw the curve on both sides of the plate. She also has a rise and a change. And we've got other changes as well. A new catcher in Aubrey Lizenby. And Woolers, who was behind the plate, is now at third base, replacing Weedra. So Weedra moves from third base to the circle. Lizenby enters the game behind the plate, and Woolers, who was the starting catcher, is now at third base. One ball, one strike to Ali Newland. A liner to the second baseman, and there's the second out. Roach was right there. She tried to double up the runner at first, McKee, but McKee easily beat it back to the bag. But Newland is retired with no advance by McKee, and now two outs as Briggs comes to the plate. She has moved her hitting streak to 13 games with an infield hit back in the first. Ball one wide from Annabelle Weedra, a very legitimate two-way player. Last pitch at 68 miles an hour. And she's got that offensive lineman number, 66. Briggs. Fouls it away, one ball, one strike, two outs, a runner at first. This game is tighter than tree bark with a two to one lead for the LSU Tigers. Weidra, a transfer from Michigan. She is from Hoover, Alabama, so that would make sense. And the chop down to Rudra came out of the bullpen to get a couple of outs. Petty with a two-run home run. That's the difference in the game right now. As Peralta hits first against Sidney Burzon. She's working on a four-hitter. One walk, five strikeouts. Peralta has grounded out and has a fielder's choice run batted in. Burzon has filled up the strike zone. She does a good job of that. And they, that was a point of emphasis to just fine tune everything. Ooh, that's a base hit. Under the glove of Gutierrez. That oh. is a base hit, but that's a ball Gutierrez he, normally handles easily. Yep, it was to her backhand though, I believe. Let's it was, but it just stayed under the glove. Yeah, just didn't get not their quite down. able to get it down far enough and extend far enough. But you're right. That's usually something she gobbles up. And there's Burzon saying, don't worry about it. We got it. 
the smiling team, that's for sure. Thalia Martin is running at first base. Excuse me, Thalia Martin is running at first base. Thalia Martin is at the bag for Peralta after the infield hit. That's off of Raylene Gutierrez, and That's everybody is safe, and we have just seen some weird yeah. stuff happen. Gutierrez, again, normally makes that play, but it caromed off of her body. She she took her eye off of it for a second. She was trying to turn two, and again, I mean, that one right there, that's the first. We haven't seen her do this. See, she's already looking at second. Yeah, it bounced up waist high. That's got to be an error, and it is. A rare. I think you're going to see a bunt here. I would think so as well. You see a rise ball, try and make her pop up. I've said this before. The pitcher's job is not to allow Abby Smith to put down a good bunt. She's a, her job is to get her to pop up or bunt the ball foul. That's down. There's only one play and a high throw, but Petty is able to grab it. McKee has flirted with danger on a couple of throws from third to first but a perfectly executed bunt. And flirted with danger is a good description here. So Auburn now has the tying run at third base, the go ahead run at second base with only one out. Oh, is this a squeeze? Roach pops it up. The runner scrambles back to third. Roach fails to get the ball on the ground, and there's the second out, and that is a huge out for the LSU Tigers. Was that a squeeze? I don't think so. It, maybe not a not a suicide. Just trying to bunt for a hit? Well, I think the runner from third had not fully committed, was waiting to see if the ball was down on the okay. dirt. So it was not a squeeze. Let's watch the runner at third to get a good wide view. Yeah, just trying to get a base hit, I guess. Oh, this is tough. Pleasance makes one whale of a play in keeping that ball in possession, but there was no place to get the out. So Milanowski in her first at bat collects the infield hit. Watch this chop. Pleasance right here makes one whale of a play. I mean, that is unbelievable. That saved a run. Saved a run. But the we've go got a tie run. ball game. Saved the go-ahead run. An RBI single on the infield by Milanowski. And do we have a ball? It, who's it on? Ball one on Weidra, I believe. No, no I think they, they called it on the hitter. Okay. So it's one and one, oh, oh and two, yeah. I think he... Uh, the hitter has to be, quote, alert to the pitcher at the 10 second mark. So now it's a count of two strikes to Annabelle Weidra. And that will take care of business. Weidra is called out on strikes. Now he's SEC Pitcher of the Week. It's like I said, I feel like she's been there forever. She's been a good one. And we also have some other defensive changes. Auburn has gone back to its original lineup at catcher with uh, Anna Woolers returning behind the plate. And then Weidra, who started the game at third base, has returned there as well. So we'll see what happens here. We've got drama in the late innings. Wouldn't be an LSU Tiger game without drama late. Pleasance 0 for 1, batting 295. Penta is the author of a perfect game this year back in February against Georgia State. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Penta is staring in as if to say, surely, surely you made a mistake. Are you kidding me? And Mickey Dean barking again. He's normally fairly placid, but not tonight. Well, he's engaged. 
The 3-1. Right down the middle. Penta also was involved in another perfect game earlier this month against Samford. It was a staff perfect game. They used three pitchers, but 15 up and 15 down in a run rule game. The 3-2 pitch dribbled foul. Got her leaning on her front foot. Pleasant. It's been Shelby Lowe, Annabelle Weidra, and now Maddie Penta in the circle for the Tigers. The Auburn Tigers. The outfield is very, very deep. The 3-2 pitch. Smacked into center field. It stays in the ballpark and is caught near the warning track by Packer. Packer was able to locate it and take the well hit ball a step in front of the warning track in center field. Good scouting report. She didn't have to move very much. Not at all. Pleasants did barrel it up. Now here is Gutierrez who has flied to right and popped up to third. And she's got a long on base streak in jeopardy right now. She's been on base in 24 consecutive games a bet. That's the most on the uh, LSU team. But uh, right now she's been held. She's had to walk away twice. That's a career high for her as well. 24 straight on base appearances. And the 1 0 off speed that drops out of the zone. It's 2 0. It's been a while since Gutierrez has had a home run. She had a lot of them early in the first couple of weeks. She caught our attention early with her improved play. But she's been stuck on five homers a while. Pinta is pretty emotional about the call she doesn't get, although I thought that was a ball. Where is it? Was it low? Not happy. And it was low. Here's the 3-0 pitch. That's a strike in the upper part of the zone. Three and one now on Gutierrez. Rudy is on deck. We've got a 2-2 game in the bottom of the sixth. And the nerves are jangling here at Tiger Park. Here we go at three and one. She reached for it, and that pitch just Was dropped it? out of sight. And it was a ball. So Gutierrez provided an assist to Penta by swinging at ball four. Here's the 3-2 pitch. And she strikes out looking. Penta rips the outside corner with some heat and left a scar on the edge. She's been politicking to get that call. Let's see here. That's a good one. Right on the borderline knees and on the outside corner. She has struck out 850 batters in her career. You know, we we don't see too much too many K's being uh, hung up anymore. The game has just turned so offensive minded. I believe that's the first strikeout of the day wow. from the three Auburn pitchers. And that is correct. Here's Ruderty with two outs. She has an infield hit and grounded out to second base. 72 miles an hour. I just shake my head at this. That'll heat your gumbo. It's just, you know, you just never saw that before. Now we've got everybody throwing 72 miles an hour. Not everybody. Not everybody, but we've got a few. And when you come back with an off-speed pitch, after throwing a lightning bolt, it really can make things interesting, can't it? Off-speed at 58 after the fastball or rise ball at 72. You know, Lynn, when people would call me and say that they had a pitcher that threw 70, I just started laughing. Mm -hmm. A chop to the first baseman and Millen for LSU. Patrick Wright has been doing it 27 years. Wow. Truly the voice of the Lady Tigers. Basketball, softball. I'd like to have his frequent flyer miles. Mm. 
We've got drama in the seventh, a 2-2 game. Anna Woolers, who started at third base and uh, then went to the circle and now has returned to third base. That's a base hit into the left field corner. Newland is chasing it down. Fires to second, not in time. A leadoff double, and Woolers He's does exactly a, what a good leadoff batter can do. She's That's back-to-back -back doubles with that at the night. top of the order. She's having a night. Auburn Tigers are not going away. It's a beautiful swing on an outside pitch. Ball and splits. we'll have a pinch runner, I believe. That's her seventh double or second of the game. No, nope. Willers does stay in the game at second base. This ball is driven to the warning track. Rudity comes up firing. It's cut off. But Auburn on a long fly ball out to right by McCrary has pushed Willers to third. And Auburn has the go-ahead run 60 feet away with one out. A double and a sacrifice and a long fly ball to right field. Auburn leadoff hitters have been good. They are six for seven tonight. And that's two balls that have been truly squared up, barreled up, hit and here, hard. Here's the three-hole hitter, Packer. She has struck out, walked, and lined into a double play. She has the most triples on the team. Packer nearly carried third baseman McKee back into left field on a line drive last time, but McKee was able to grab it and then turn it into a force out double play at third. <laughs> Nelia Peralta is on deck. A big moment, LSU needs a strikeout. Auburn wants to put the ball in play and send the runner home from third. How many strikeouts does Burzon have tonight? I've got her for six. Packer has been successful scoring the runner from third base three out of five times this year with less than two outs. Ooh, barely missed. LSU's crowd, some of it rising and moaning. But good call. But it is outside. And a one-two pitch, one out, a runner at third. It's big right Man, here. And that's a better pitch. A cold third strike. Came right back with the same pitch and just brought it over a half a ball. That's number seven. Watch this one. And you got to swing your bat with the runner at third. Now two outs. Can LSU get back to the dugout in a tie game? We play in the top of the seventh. It's Peralta at the plate. Ball one. Peralta has grounded out to second. She has an RBI on a fielder's choice. And she also has singled. The pitch right down Nicholson Drive. Changing speeds, that change up. Runner at third, Burzon's got to be a wall back there with that famous drop ball of Burzon's. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Crowd trying to help out the Tigers. The drama is thick Tick. here at the ballpark. The pitch. Nope. Off the plate, two and two. You know how Cajuns say thick? Tick, tick. The ever cool Beth Tarina. The 2 2 pitch. This is the make it happen pitch. And it's fouled away. We will do it again. Peralta's getting her hacks in there. She certainly is. Isis Trezvik is on deck. She's one for three. Two outs. Good job by Bergeron. And now it's a 3-2 count with first base open. And Trezvik on deck. And this is a good at-bat by Peralta. 
so far. The full count pitch. Predictably dribbled foul. She's going up there to hit. She's not looking for a walk. The LSU's infield, McKee and Pleasance and Petty and Gutierrez. LSU's outfield, Newland and Briggs and Ruderty. LSU's catcher, Bergeron. Bergeron, oh, here comes Beth Serena. Big pitch here. Full count, runner. Tresvik, who's on deck, is on a hot streak. That's pop foul. LSU would love to take care of business right here because Tresvik is on a six game hitting streak and is batting 350 with runners in scoring position. She waits in the on deck circle. And Peralta's had a good at bat here. How many pitches in this at bat? The 3 2 pitch coming again. Ball oh. four. Well, that's that. not the end of the world because it brings up a new hitter, but this is a good hitter in Tresvik and on a hot streak right now. But that was nine pitches. Peralta earned that walk. She did. That's well said. Tresvik has an infield single. She has grounded out and reached on the rare error by Gutierrez on a ground ball. Here it comes. Steve Reich. Auburn oh. has sent the runner from first, trying to get in a rundown, perhaps, and yep. eventually she winds up at second she because the Tigers decided to put the ball in their pocket. Yep, she tried to draw the throw to second, but Bergeron said, nope, no dice. The runner at third is the major concern for LSU. And time is called. Two outs, two in scoring position, one strike on Tresvik. Isis. Hits it just foul pass first. A nice stop by Gutierrez on the backhand side, <laughs> but it was foul. And she kind of cheered for herself like, I got it. You see how cat quick Gutierrez is. Look at that. The ball just went foul at the end. McKee fumbles it at third, a run scores. A one hopper. That McKee appeared to be in great shape to finish the play at first base, and she could not squeeze it. Once again, I think she might have picked up her head too soon. Let's see here. Just a freshman. And a but she's in perfect position for this. We couldn't see it on that replay. But McKee went right to the ball. The ball hit in the middle of her leather and then rolled away. So LSU's second error has been costly, as was the first one. And Pleasance, the senior, is going to go over there and kind of try and pick her up. But, you know, you hope McKee is the conversation is not in her head that, you know, she's made a couple of iffy throws. So, I mean, she appears to have it. And then I think you're right, Yvette. I think, her, I think her eye level changed. I mean, that's 90% of what happens on a ball like that on an era. And it appeared she did not follow the ball visually into her glove. Count the hops into your glove. Count the hops. That way the, your head will stay down. So here is Penta. And flicks this one foul. LSU will need a run at least in the bottom of the seventh. Auburn coming in three and nine in the league. Nine and six for the Tigers. Back and forth we've gone here. It's been a good one. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for Auburn. Two runs, five hits, two errors for LSU. Big time drop ball that just disappears. Not even close to the level of her bat. An error contributed to a run in the sixth inning. An error has contributed to a run in the seventh. Yep, just not clean defense on the infield for the Tigers. And that's pulled foul. And both corner infielders have been charged with an error tonight. You know, there's just, once you get into SEC play, there's just no, no secrets anymore. Each ball club knows 
everything about each other. Peralta swings through it, or rather Pinta swings through it and strikes out to end the inning. He has returned to center field, uh, excuse me, left field, replacing Abby Smith. So it's Woolers and Peralta and Roach and Milanowski on the infield. McCrary, Packer, and Tresvik in the outfield. The one strike pitch to Carly Petty. Right down Main Street. We go back to Wednesday. The three run, or excuse me, earlier today. This is the two run homer off the scoreboard that Petty smacked in the fourth inning. No home runs in the first whatever games, and now we have two back to back home runs from Petty. The Can one she one. do it again? She had some walk offs in her career at Oklahoma State. But her home run Wednesday was her first. Her home run tonight was her second. She, That's a I foul ball. Continue to say she has been a tremendous pickup. She's a transfer from Oklahoma State. And she has just played, to me, a phenomenal second base and has swung a very good bat. That's high and tight. LSU needs a base runner and would prefer it to come early in the inning. Lynch is on deck. One of the best pitchers in the league goes right at Petty and strikes her out on an elevated pitch. And that rise ball moving through the zone and couldn't catch up with this pitch. Watch this ball just explode. That one top 70 miles an hour. It was 71. And you're right. It just exploded through the upper part of the zone. And Pinta is very demonstrative in the circle. We haven't seen this in a while. Here's Kelly Lynch. She has bounced into a 6-3 double play and rolled out to the second baseman. A graduate student out of Noonan, Georgia. Pinta's best pitch is elevated and hard. Ground ball through the hole on the left side. Lynch with a key single and a clutch swing and drove it through the left side to Woolers' left and Peralta's right and bounced it through on a couple of hops. Good piece of hitting there by Lynch. And Lynch is a cool customer in a pressure situation. And she will be relieved of duty at first base. We've got a pinch runner. Maya Townsend, the sophomore, is the runner at first. Here's Macy Bergeron, who has rounded to third and popped up to the shortstop. The pitch high and away. This is the first time Bergeron has faced Pinta. This is Auburn's best and one of the best in the league, Matty Pinta, the SEC Pitcher of the Year last year. The 1-0. That drops off the zone. Anything that she throws down in the zone will be considerably slower than that hard stuff she's throwing up. That's a ripper for a strike. Two balls, one strike. She might. Towns in the pinch runner at first, representing the tying run in the seventh. That takes a right turn. Foul. And it's two and two on Bergeron. Pinta's 
Maybe the hardest throw we've seen here this mm -hmm. this year. I would agree. Oh, and she pulled out a changeup for a strikeout. An off-speed pitch freezes Bergeron, and that one dropped into the strike zone right here. That's a beauty. Penta, in a couple of innings of relief, has struck out three. Now it's up to McKee. Ball one upstairs. McKee has popped up to the shortstop and singled last time. LSU 55 wins, 23 losses, whole time against Auburn. 25 and 8 in Baton Rouge. But Auburn has a 3 to 2 lead in the seventh with two outs and a 2 0 count on the key with LSU's Allie Newland on deck. And the Tigers would love to see her at the plate with a chance to tie or win it. And McKee would dearly love to get a base hit here. Two LSU errors on the infield have accounted for two unearned runs. The 2-0 pitch, swing and a foul back. Auburn defense expects her to be late on the pitch because uh, Peralta, is, is it Peralta at third? My, my Shortstop. Okay, who's at third? Uh, Willers. Willers at third. Look at how far she's playing off the line. Yep. And the left fielder, McCrary, is also playing her as an opposite field hitter. Two balls and a strike, two outs, the tying run at first base. The pitch from Matty Penta. Fouled away on the left side. McKee exhales deeply. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The freshman hanging tough. Will they call a change up here? I don't know that I would want to speed her bat up, potentially. But Penta throws a great one. Got her in a ball in the dirt. The throw has to be made to first base. It is, and the Auburn Tigers have come from.